Lawrence. Yeah. A lot of people are wondering about entrepreneurs. What do you think about entrepreneurs? Uh, well, you know, it's become cool, right? If you look back, you know, uh, 10, 15, 20 years ago, uh, it wasn't cool to be an entrepreneur. And in fact, no one was even called an entrepreneur. Look, there's lots of pitch and catch about that. Uh, let's dive into a conversation and let's see where it ends up, I guess. Lawrence, I'm super curious. Your entrepreneurial- Super journey. curious. Yeah, super curious about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, tell me about that. Well, look, I guess it, it started pretty young, all right? I was in an interview and they said, well, look, when did you know uh, where you wanted to be an entrepreneur? And I said, well, I don't, you know, I don't really know whether there's a line in the sand, so to speak, right? I think when I was young, you know, at high school, I was a musician, I played sports, you know, I did all the usual things. But through that journey, you sort of get to understand who you are as a kid, right, in high school. Um, and you start to develop at that time, I think, is when you start to become, step out of adolescence and move into young adulthood. During school, I, you know, I was, you know, had a couple of paper runs. I, you know, I used to book bands actually because I was a musician. So I tickets to those gigs with a with a couple of mates. So that was probably the start of the entrepreneurial journey. You know, um, when I was a kid, I'd, I'd walk around the neighbors' ha homes and ask them if I could pick the plums and the apricots and the apples off their trees. I'd bag those up, write a buck on it, and I'd knock door to door and I'd sell them. Right? I don't know whether that's a sign of being a true entrepreneur, but it certainly opens the doorway to the thought about working for yourself and becoming a business owner and all that sort of stuff. And uh, entrepreneur is just such a broad, you know, idea and word. Did you know that you wanted to build a big company or did you have anything else in mind? Uh, I had no idea. Uh, absolutely no idea um, that I wanted to be an entrepreneur and build a company. And I don't even know how it happened sometimes, you know. I think what, for me, there's one thing I learned when I was a child is that I learned everything about work ethic. Gr growing up on a, on a family farm, you know, we didn't have a lot of money. We we're a poor family in a small house, you know, with six kids. Then again, you know, very thankful for that environment and, you know, your mum and dad and your parents do as best they can. But being squeezed in that environment sometimes forges a need or a want to be better, right? And I probably think that's where it came from. And my father taught me about work ethic. So all I really knew was to work hard. These days, it's so easy to find a nine to five <clears throat> job and, you know, it's just easy to get hired everywhere. So why yeah. do you recommend people to become an entrepreneur? Well, I don't recommend anyone to become an entrepreneur. I think it's a very tough journey. And I've said this before, it's brutal. On the last video I did, I said, I think it's 3% of, you know, entrepreneurs become successful, the rest of them fail, yeah. you know, out of a third, right? Let's say if you look at 100%, 33% of them try, 3% become successful. And there's a whole bunch of variables to that, you know, um, it's about belief systems, strength, courage, uh, intelligence, product, you know, uh, exposure. For me, I never actually thought about it as entrepreneurship because that word wasn't used when I was, you know, like I'm 153 years old. So <laughs> that, that, we were just business owners. That's what we called ourselves. I'm, I'm a business owner uh, or a director. And it was never a founder or an entrepreneur. I always think about it's okay to be a number two right. Right? or a number three. Yeah. You know, if you look at some of the biggest organizations on the planet, whether it be Meta, you know, um, you know, Elon Musk's companies, Amazon, Microsoft, you know, some of those number twos, number threes, and number fours uh, in those organizations, large amounts of revenue to get paid for their expertise and knowledge, right? Not everyone's cut out to be an entrepreneur. And I think if you learned that early, uh, I think that will do you a great service. If you learn it too late, it'll be a disservice. What are some of the influencers to become a founder, entrepreneur, like, would you reckon parents have a big influence to that? Or would you reckon maybe the environment, education, like how can people become an entrepreneur or is it kind of deeply rooted within you? Well, there's a lot to that response, right? I think there's a couple of go-tos for me. I think you could be a planned entrepreneur. I think if you're lucky enough to go to a great college, you know, whether it be an Ivy League college or just a, you know, a good community college, um, university or whatever it may be, I think what happens in that environment is that you get to surround yourself with people who are on a journey, right? Whether they're there to become a lawyer, a barrister, a, a medical professional, whatever it may be. You know, those guys are normally pretty focused and on a bit of a journey. So you're immersing yourself in, in good quality people who can pick you up and help you get motivated and drive towards certain things. And I think that's critical. And I think that's where it starts for most people. And that's normally influenced by parents. Like, so your parents are quite successful. They're probably doing something that's at a professional level, at a C level, executive level, they might be business owners, company directors themselves. And that trickles down through their social influence on their children, right? Now, if you're not like that, like me, and you've come from a poor family and they were farmers and construction workers, you don't have that. People say to me, yeah, well, where did you get it from? Like, what, you know, was it growing up in, in a poor neighborhood and, and, and having no money? Is that what motivates you? I, well, who knows? I don't know, but no one really knows. And people who talk like that, I, I, I call 
on it because I think there's so many things to influence that, right? Uh, does a social environment have an influence? Of course it does. Do your parents have an influence? Of course they do. Are the friends that you used to hang out with in high school, are they influential? Yes, they are. A university? Yes, they are. You know, so there's so many different things that can influence a person to become an entrepreneur, business owner, a founder, whatever it may be. If you grew up around people and families in a town where there was a car manufacturing plant and it employed 50% of the town's population, well, that's probably where you'd go. So influence is a huge thing, but I think that influence can be broken up in many different areas. All I know that one thing I learned from influence was work ethic. I know that if you worked hard, you could earn money. But a lot of people say that that's, that's what rich people say. That's what people who already succeeded say. Is there any way that you could categorize environment, parents, wealth? Like, what is the most important factor to become a founder? There's a couple of things that stand out for me. Belief systems. I think I grew up with the wrong belief system. So, you know, I had to pivot from the influence from my parents and the environment in which I grew up in. Some people grow up in tough environments. People have poor parents and grow up in a poor environment. Well, that's okay. You know, that shouldn't really determine your outcome. For me, all I learned again was work ethic. I just knew how to work hard. So when I walked into an environment, forged me opportunities because they looked at me and they go, who's that kid who turns up before everybody else and is always the last to leave? They educated me, they taught me things, gave me skill sets. They employed me and I was very respectful to someone paying me to do anything really. You know, I wasn't really a smart kid, um, but I had tenacity and grit, right? So, you know, I think Work ethic, tenacity, grit. Um, you know, I look at things like courage. I think that's pretty important. Uh, if you're super entitled, uh, which a lot of people are, let's face it, <laughs> um, you know, it, it becomes a little bit harder for you, I think, because when you get hit and things go wrong, uh, you, you tend not to be able to deal with those uh, very well. And if you grew up in a tough environment and you're just naturally tough, yep. you know, it's just all off a duff, duck's back. You just carry on, right? So there's those things. I think you need to be uh, physically strong. I think you need to look after your health. Uh, your mindset needs to be strong as well. Um, you need to have a good idea yeah. uh, and to surround yourself with talent. You can't sell a shitty product to a market that doesn't exist. You'll just go broke. <laughs> and that's the dumbest thing you could ever do. Trust me, I've done it. So, um, but you know, again, it's resilience, right? I think we underestimate strength, right? Mm. Uh, not many people talk about it. Professor Galloway talks about it a lot. I sort of tune into him about masculinity and strength. Yeah. Shit hits the fan that you can kill everyone in the room or get everyone to safety. Uh, and I completely agree with that. I think um, true masculinity is uh, starting to fall away a little bit. Women want a strong man who can provide for them, who is successful and who can protect them, right? They just do, like the, the research tells us this. If there was anything I could say to young entrepreneurs now is figure out and unpack what makes you strong and resilient. Do what you're passionate about and you'll succeed. What do you think about that? Well, I've spoken about this before. Look, um, you yeah, know, I think that uh, I just don't believe that. When you're young, um, do what you're passionate about. I don't even think you know what you're passionate about, you know, unless you're one of the lucky ones. If you're one of the top one, two or three percent, the elite, you know, the Michael Jordans of this world, the Kobe's, the Dave Grohl's, you know what I mean? Like you just, I don't know, man, not all born like Jeff Bezos or Elon Musk, you know, Bill Gates. We're just not like that. Rich people say that. You know what I mean? Poor people don't normally say that because they have to work and earn money. So they don't have the opportunity to do what they're passionate about. So there's two things to that. I think when you're young, you don't know what you're passionate about. So that becomes a problem. And then you might dive into something that you think you're passionate about, but it's maybe just something you like. And the other issue I have with that is that rich people say that and, and they say it when they've made their millions of dollars. Right. Because now they've been able to position themselves after all the, the 10 or 15 or 20 years worth of hard work, like eating shit for 10 years, right? And that's what you have to do to build a business, kids. You have to eat for 10 years, uh, if not longer. Uh, and, and then you get yourself into a position uh, where you can say that. Now, it's okay if you want to take that advice and heed that advice, that's fine. My advice on this video today is that be very cautious of people who walk around saying, follow your passion, because I guarantee you they're already rich uh, and they never did that to start with. I think what you should do is find something that you're good at and then think about mastery. Leaning into mastery is the way to win the game, all right? So find something you're good at that you don't particularly hate with a passion. And then when you get good at it, right? When you get good at it and you can master it, then you become passionate about it. That's where passion comes from. If you were to recap what, you know, what success is, if you see a person that's very successful, what kind of person is that? Let me start with this. You know, categorizing success is pretty important. Uh, uh, is it money? Oh, look, I don't think it is. Uh, is it status? No, I don't think it is. So what is it? Is it happiness? Is it security? You know, how secure do you feel? 
you know, uh, in your life? Uh, how secure is your family and how do you feel about that emotionally? So there's all these things that I think wrap up what you would define success as. When I hear the phrase uh, wealthy people, you know what I mean? I normally pivot to, oh, okay, you mean they're rich as in they have lots of money. Now, I know people who have lots of money and who are miserable and people who have no money and are super happy, right? So there's a balance inside that somewhere. If you wanted to hover around the middle and live life in that middle space, I think that's a nice place to be. If you were chasing happiness and you define that as success is got to do with money. But here's, here's what I know. I would rather be miserable and rich in business class than in coach. I just would, right? So we know that's going to help. Yeah. For me personally, I like money. You know, I like good economics because it creates security for myself and my family. And I'm a bit of a warrior when it comes to money. And I think I got that from my father and my parents is that's why I work so hard. Like I have money. Um, and investments and I'm relatively financially secure, but I still work like I'm 22, right? If I was to think about that question and it's really, it's a difficult one to, to, and I think everyone sees it slightly differently, you know, what's being wealthy, being rich, I think is about a quality and balance, physically fit and strong. I think it's about uh, eliminating stress and anxiety from your life. And I think economics for me do that. So I think there's all these anchor points in someone's life. Uh, if you want to talk about success, if you don't have those, I think it's hard to be successful. Is money part of it? Yeah, look, I think it is. If I was to be honest, it is for me, certainly. Um, uh, but it's not everything. Like a lot of influencers and a lot of founders don't want to be left behind. How can big tech help them and how are they not going to be left behind? Yeah, big tech, man, that's a big conversation, right? Look, there's some good things going on in that space, some great things about innovation and what's happening uh, in terms of innovation and progression. But there's also a dark side to it, right? Um, you know, I think the influence from big tech has uh, got a lot of negativity on our youth, especially kids having access to devices like this where they can basically get access to anything on the planet that's uncensored, by the way, uh, free of charge. Uh, so I think that's dangerous. I think uh, governments should work harder on uh, regulating technologies, even if the entry point had more guardrails and filters. I read an article, I think it's uh, two in every six young adults, you know, attempt to, to kill themselves and out of that one is successful. Uh, out of that, four out of the six suffer from some form of depression and anxiety. You know, we worked ourselves into a situation post a global pandemic where large corporate Corporations forced all of their employees to work from home. All they do is they sit on their screen all day and that was their view to the world. I see companies like Amazon forcing people to come back to the office and, and I think that's great. I think that's such a good thing. Yep. I remember when I was growing up in young corporate Australia, you know, in the city. And one thing I always look forward to is Friday afternoon drinks, right? I made a lot of friends and socialized a lot in some of those jobs that I had. Even when I worked on construction sites, you know, you're you're interacting with other people, you're meeting new people, um, and you're creating friendships. I think we lost a bit of that. The growth of Zoom, uh, Teams, Microsoft, putting uh, all that effort to that new technologies and certainly all the hardware that had to drive it as well is great. But I think we're losing a little bit um, of our youth in terms of big tech. I remember only the other night seeing a, uh, a free-to-wear television ad where Instagram, they were advertising a parental lock on the Instagram platform, right? So this is on free-to-air television. It was an ad that was paid for by Meta. And I sat there and I thought about something. And, and when I watched that ad, I just called on that. Because here's what they're doing. By the way, that's the first time I've ever seen an ad paid for by Meta on Australian television, free-to-air. And I think, okay, so how long has the platform been around? Quite a few years now. How many people are on that platform? Billions of people. How much money has Meta made in the last few years in terms of being able to monetize that platform? And only now, they're rolling out one parental barrier in the platform when they're advertising it and making it public. So they've made billions and billions and billions of dollars off that platform, providing uh, uh, dangerous information to, to young kids. Why? Because it wasn't legislated, they don't have to, but they see the future, right? And hopefully, just hopefully, um, we can get uh, governments to, to step up a little bit. Uh, is technology gonna make life better for us? Absolutely it is. Is it gonna take pe people's jobs off them? Well, it's going to get them to pivot and learn other jobs and other skill sets. It's gonna make us more efficient. It's gonna make our lives better. I'm, so I'm down with it, 100%. But I think we're missing the social interaction. You know what I mean? So when I talk about things like strength, resilience, grit, work ethic, 
intelligence, education, we have to do that together. You know, we are social creatures. Um, we need to live in tribes. That's where we came from. When I see a rise in young suicides, um, you know, I think big tech uh, have some responsibility. Just very briefly, do you think Zoom and, you know, Microsoft Teams and all these, you know, online platforms foster complacency and maybe um, laziness? I don't think they're lazy. I think they're very proactive. They're there to generate revenue for their shareholders. So when you hear the soft tones of, you know, Sam Altman talking about, hey, we just want to make sure that AI is safe for everybody. Uh, it's you know, they went from a non-for-profit to a for-profit company. Like, that is a strategy. On paper, they're the fastest growing startup in the history of startups on the planet. And basically, they're ahead of everybody else, including Alphabet, including Google. They're, they're ahead of those guys. They will own the market. And they're there to make money and take control. You know, kudos to them. Like, you, if you want to see the integration and partnership between Microsoft and OpenAI and all the other companies that these companies are buying, by the way, you know, there will be a monopoly in that space, right? Is it anti-competitive? Absolutely. Will the government do something about it? Well, they probably cannot. You know, we have a presidential election that's going to be tied off in November this year. I see Elon Musk uh, at, a, at a rally for Donald Trump, and there's got to be an agenda to that, right? He's not doing that because he's a political advocate. He's doing that because he knows that if he does it, he can monopolize a particular industry. That's the world we live in, it is a capitalist society. And no harm, no foul, I'm also a capitalist, right? I like to make money and, and, and I wanna create and build things, but I think there needs to be some equality and some measurement uh, and some, some boundaries and restrictions to that. We're living in a, in a very progressive uh, market around the planet right now. It's never been, there's never been more opportunity than there ever has been to thrive, be successful and move towards prosperity. There's a price to be paid for that. And I think uh, our youth are starting to see that. Um, that's what I think. If you were in ed tech or in consultancy, what would you do? Is there a problem that you would like to solve? We're an ed tech company, right? So our product is delivered online. Um, you know, we use a lot of automations to deliver that product, you know, the online education products. We sit on the good side of it, right? Not that social media is the bad side, I'm not saying that at all. I think social media uh, can be amazing and can connect lots of people, so it does have a, uh, a, a good byproduct to it. Um, the negativity is outweighing all the good things at the moment. Even though we're, we're a technology-based business, we call ourselves an edtech business, we deliver education in an online way. I couldn't sell sugary snacks, to teenage children to give them diabetes. So I find the education space a good vehicle um, to scale. So if we wanna talk about capitalization, can we do it with a product that has an element of contribution? Or is the product that you're delivering going to be harmful for, to people? So I think that's a good way to, to view big tech right now. Like what can we build to help where we're currently at, whether it be you know people, communities, countries, environments, markets, industries, whatever that may be. Finally, is there any piece of advice that you could give entrepreneurs that seek financial independence? Uh, well, look, it's everything that we discussed, right? I think you need to be relentless and go for it. I think founders need to be um, risk takers. But I was never that smart, but there's one thing that I was good at and that was, that was taking risks. And some of those risks will pay off and some of them you will lose. You gotta educate yourself. Yeah, you have to have a good network around you. Uh, and if you're uncomfortable with building a network, you have to get over that because other people will open doors for you. It's just gonna get you there faster, right? So what would take 10 years if you had the right connections may only take one or two. So I think that's important. I think you need to have a good idea. It needs to be priced well to take it into the market. I think you need to think about personal brand. And what I mean by that is I think you need to operate in a way that's honest and ethical in all business practices. There is no one that can c come to me and say that I, that I f them over. That is just not possible because I've never done that. I think you need to see the future and understand technology right now. I think it's moving so fast. If you don't uh, and you're naive with it, you may miss out or you may make the wrong move or the wrong decision. I think that's critically important. I think you have to learn how to sell. I think all founders and strong founders know how to sell and that's sort of where they came from. And the last thing is I think you need to be strong. You know, I think we, I, I see um, communities of young entrepreneurs not as strong as what we used to be when we were younger or their age, right? Like we were relentless when we were young. Uh, and I'm not seeing that strength in some of these young kids anymore. You know, again, uh, there's so many influences that are impacting them negatively, but I think you need to be strong. And uh, again, you know, you need to be able to kill everyone in the room or get everyone to safety. And I think that's a good way to look at it for me. Great. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool.